Holy moly, Joe. It is so clean out here now. Boy, it got windy too. But we got rid of a ton of stuff back here. Everything that we had here, cleaned it up, organized, all sorts of stuff. So this is nice now. We're gonna make a few different things back here, but thankfully it's clean because now we gotta find homes for a lot of this stuff. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the Team Olympus YouTube channel. Tonight, we're working on tires. Yeah. All right, so like we told you in our last video, we're gonna be cleaning up a lot of this stuff here, and we already got to jump on a bunch of stuff today all throughout there. Uh, but one of the things we got to work on now is the Ultra 4. So right now, we have five lug rims, wheels, whatever you want to call them, bead locks for the Ultra 4. But it's been changed to eight lug. See, we got eight lugs now. And we have these new awesome race line bead locks look great but the problem is we got to put the tires on these things so joe has volunteered to teach everybody how to remove a bead lock and how to install a bead lock that's what he thinks so joe what you got going on man well i'm going to attempt to take that off of there using only those cool you gonna do this? You gonna do this racetrack style? Uh, if we have to, we will go racetrack style. For now, we're just gonna try to do it right here. Okay. So the first thing, uh, two things you can do. Uh, you wanna take the valve core out? Let the air out. I'm just gonna go ahead and let it out this way. You want to be really careful when you do that because if you loosen too much, you can actually pop the <laughs> ring off and it can hurt you. See, it's another point. Notice I only pulled them out about halfway. Yeah. That's the first step. Now, the next step is cleaning up all your bolts. Because we may still need those. Oh, yeah. Now, the fun part is unseating this bead, which that will be a little bit of a challenge. Wow. But we're doing this all with basic tools. One of the biggest challenges when it comes to mounting and dismounting a bead lock, primarily dismounting, is getting it off the bead. So with this video, we want to show you more techniques that you can do without a tire machine, um, without anything that could damage the tire. So what we're going to do now is take the tire up to the front of the race car, and Joe is going to show us how we can field strip a tire from a rim. Okay, so... We're gonna use the weight of the race car on the high lift to unseat this bead. And Joe already has this set up. There we go. Okay. 
And as always with high lifts, be careful. They don't call these widow makers for nothing. Oh man, this is a problem. There's not enough weight on this either. I can't see what it's doing. Dang it. You know what would work great is if we had the lift open, we could use the lift. But it's not. <laughs> so we can't. Now that we have broken the bead, you can see it's coming off right here. We can start to work our way around the tire. We can pull it off. So we're going to do this two or three more times, and that should have the tire ready to come off the wheel. Hey, I just. That one just relaxed a little bit. We've popped the bead on all sides now. And I think, oh, hey, Mr. He-Man over here. Yeah. The hot finally went. Whew. So now that pops out, and uh, we should be able to pry it up. It'll pop out uh, a little easier because there's no bead on the other side because it's on the actual bead lock ring, but that's that. So can you get it, Joe? Should just pull almost straight up. Not there you go. Come off the edge. Oh, wait, there we go. Yeah, kind of got it. Now we probably need something underneath this side so it doesn't fall back down. Do you need my help? Yeah, I need something to. Okay. All right, go ahead and pull up. There you go. We're just gonna gently pop it up while Joe's pulling, and it'll slide. Tire spoons work really good, and probably a good thing to have in your race kit if you're changing tires. And I'm not putting that much pressure on this. It's just enough to get it past the rubber. Okay. It's almost off. And there you go. The bead lock is now off the wheel. Now we're just gonna play the film in reverse, right? Yep. Put it back on. Now that we have the tire and the wheel separated, we're gonna show you what comes in the kit and we're gonna get it mounted up. Oh man, this is wild on a spinny chair. Whoa! It's like looking at the shop, that'll make you sick. So race line rims, um, in this box we have our beadlock ring, apparently the bolts, because it's stuck and they don't want to come off. So there's our brush aluminum ring, we got our bag of bolts, so I'll set these over here. Then in our box, we have a bag. And guess what? We have another bag. This protects the rim. Bead lock, wheel, whatever you want. And there is the beautiful race line, eight on 170, brushed aluminum with black powder coats, 17 inch bead lock rim. And one thing I always want to check before you mount is your valve stems. Man, I can't tell you how disheartening it is to mount a beadlock on a wheel or on a tire and look down and your valve stem's not in. You got to take it back apart. But thankfully, there's ways you can get to it. But regardless, make sure your valve stem is on your beadlock. With Mickey Thompson tires, uh, specifically what we're running, the uh, their stickies and I believe even their DOT tires, they have a inside sidewall 
And then, just as you would expect, they have an outside sidewall. So always check and make sure if your tire is directional or a specific pattern that you've got it set up right. So now we're going to put it on the beadlock. All right. Now that we're ready to pop this on. We're going to set the beadlock up because, as we mentioned, this lip is a little bit smaller. So this will pop over it so it can sit on there. We're going to spray this slip down on my face with some soapy water here. And we'll set it down on top of the rim. We'll kind of wiggle it. And there we go pops right on okay so next thing we're going to do is joe's going to take a block of wood and set it underneath here to kind of help support the way the wheel there we go and we're going to center up the tire a little bit here so i'm just going to take a flathead screwdriver and just loosely pop the ring into place here. It doesn't really take any pressure. It's just getting where it's supposed to go and ready for the beadlock ring. Hmm. I'm not wanting to seat exactly. There you go. Now that's in place. You want to hit all four corners. And we'll start putting our, okay, I got one started here. And then you have to push a little bit and get it started by hand. Now, we're going to use the impact set on the lowest setting. And go ahead and pull this in a little. Now that that's in, we can start to go around the rest of the wheel. And you always start by hand. Because you don't want to break the nut cert, or if it doesn't have a nut cert, you don't want to strip the threads. Okay, so now, now that we have all of the bolts fairly snug, uh, we don't over snug them, uh, we're going to go through the torque wrench and the first thing we're going to do is go to 16 foot pounds per the manufacturer's spread. And we're going to start on each side and crisscross until we get to all the way around the whole thing. And then we'll redo it and go in a circle. So Joe, that's what We, uh, we were working on these tires and I kept stacking them up and we're having a little bit of a man contest here. Let's see if we can get them all the way up. How much these things weigh? I don't know. 
150 maybe? Something like that, yeah, pretty heavy. Can't get up there? See it. <laughs> Your turn. How did I set you up for failure? The way you set it down. What? Just the way you set it down on the ground. And like tomorrow, be easier. You, did you grunt a little bit? Tomorrow's, yeah, a little bit. Okay. Tomorrow's video is Daniel and Jogo, the chiropractor. <laughs> oh, he got it. It gets heavy after you get it. Well, right point. when you get it to about the point yep. it's level, it's that last extra little area. Well, cool. Yep. The last thing we have to do is get air in this tire. Now, one of the things that often happens is the bead is not fully set and you can't get it to take air. It all depends on your tire, but I gotta be honest, with these tires, the sidewalls and everything is so thick that I'm pretty sure if we put a little pressure on it, it'll take air. So I'm gonna have Joe go on the other side, put some air in it, and I'm gonna put a little pressure on this side and we'll see if we can get it to seal and pop back. Okay, go ahead and put some air in it. Oh wow, look at that. Is it seating? It went right in. Nice. I didn't hear it. So as you can see, it just went right in. Joe's going to take it up to about 25 PSI. So what do you want me to fill this up to? 25 PSI. <laughs> it's the way every GoPro video used to start. <laughs> Just do well, that. there you have it. Uh, that is how you mount a beadlock. So when you are out on the trail at a race or somewhere where you need to mount a beadlock, or if you're at home in your garage and you take care of it, now you can see how you can do it without having to use a tire machine or tire spoons or any fancy tools. So we used a high lift, basic hand tools, a race car, and a Joe. <laughs> I guess Joe is a special kind of tool. Well, we hope you like the updates, everything going down daily here. Uh, we're trying to get a lot of content uploaded. Uh, right now, we're trying to get content up each and every day, so hopefully you guys enjoy all this stuff. If you liked the video, make sure you give us a big thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, make sure you get subscribed. As you saw in our last video, we just did a giveaway, and he got himself a set of headlights and a t-shirt. So, all right, Joe, you ready to go home? Let's get out of here. All right, fist bump for you. We'll see you guys in the comments. Fist bump for you.